So as most of you know, I have a GH5 again. Um, I love this camera. I love it more and more the more I use it. And I actually think that it looks and feels better than even my s 52 x which I also like this camera. And you know, body size wise, they're not too different, but I still just like the ergonomics of the GH5 a little bit better. So I posted on this channel before about the little newer half cage that I have for the s 52 x And essentially I like half cages because I like to be able to grip the right hand side of my camera without having a big piece of metal and it just makes everything way more chunky. The problem is the GH5 is kind of old in the tooth obviously and there aren't really any half cages for this camera. So that makes it a little hard trying to rig it out if I want to put a top handle on it, like something like this. I can't just like stick it right to the hot shoe, that's not really that safe. So I was trying to think, could I cannibalize a cage for the GH5 that would still grab it in two places because I've had the GH5 in the past and I had a small rig cage, the original GH5 cage for it and it just kind of only grabbed it on the bottom and it didn't grab it anywhere else and so I couldn't really like turn it into a half cage because otherwise it would just be kind of like really really flimsy. So I started looking around and I found this cage. This is the version 2 small rig cage. And what's different about this is that it is built a little bit better, feels a little more solid, but most importantly, it grabs the camera in actually three places if you're gonna use it as a full cage. So you can screw in little connection points on these uh, eyelet holes here that you would you know normally put your strap to. So I was thinking I could take this cage and just cut it up with a hacksaw and turn it into a half cage so that I could still have the right hand side of my GH5. So that's what I'm gonna do and we'll see if it works. So I've got the cage here and I have a vise. And basically I'm just gonna be cutting it right here and then there's only just this one connection at the bottom here. So it should be fairly simple to do. more work than I thought it was gonna be. Step one, done. All right, now we just have this one little section right here to cut off and then we'll have a half gauge for the GH5. <laughs> May have messed up here, my friends. Okay, so here is the half cage. Now there was a little bit of a problem while cutting. I kind of wrenched on a little bit too much and there's a little crack. I don't know if you can see it right there. And that's a problem because that is a weak point of this cage. And so what I did is I just carved a little bit. My dad and me, we carved a little bit into it. So I'm gonna be Reinforcing it. It's still like really really strong, but I'm gonna be reinforcing it just a little bit with some baking soda and super glue so So at this point of the video I thought that the baking soda and super glue trick would work to hold the two pieces of aluminum together As you can see here I'm just trying to get some baking soda into the crack on this cage and then trying and failing to open the super glue and then just kind of dabbing it in I thought that this would work because the the crack in the cage was so small that maybe just a little bit of super glue and something like baking soda to help it kind of bond better would do the trick but as we'll find out it didn't quite work so after the glue dried i just kind of you know marked over it with a sharpie just to get rid of that white but as we'll see this solution didn't quite work out Damn it, waste of time. There's a little bit of play. And not that that play is like the worst thing ever. I've seen cages that come brand new with a little bit of play. I just don't want this to actually crack. Not like I'm gonna be putting a lot of weight on this camera, but still. So I'm gonna look for a different solution. I'm not gonna give up that easily. This is day two. So my idea is to use some steel stick, which is like epoxy putty and just filling this entire gap because I don't really need it. So I'm gonna try it. I figure this thing was like, you know, six bucks or something like that. I'm just gonna kind of grind down or I guess sand down a little bit of 
this cage just so that the epoxy has a little something to stick to. And I might even scratch it up on the inside here just so that you all know what I'm trying to say, right? Okay, never used this before, but basically I just use a pair of gloves apparently. I only have one glove, hold on. Hold please. This is 4,000 pounds per square inch. Need this, like they say, fill the gap here. Kind of cover the whole thing with this JB Weld. Kind of smells like burning metal, to be honest. Well, that's how we're looking. Not too bad. I'm just gonna kind of leave this for a day and see how it you know, looks. Uh, as long as it's strong, I don't even care if it looks a little haggard. This is just for my GH5, so I don't really, this isn't like my show up on set, do client work type of camera. So if this JB Weld stuff works, I'll be really, really stoked. Okay, so I feel like right now, this little rig, it's kind of in its final form. I don't honestly think that there's anything else that I'd want to add to it. This is like, simplistic and it just reminds me of a little c100 except in a gh5 which has objectively better image as long as you don't count low light so yeah i mean i have this top handle which this was recommended to me by cole over at alt cine you can get this on aliexpress and what's kind of cool is that this here let me take it off real quick so what cole recommended i did was get some little like m2 screws and glue them in to the airy locating holes. And so I glued them into those holes and there's also airy locating holes on this cage. So I screw the thumb screw into the bottom quarter 20 here. And then these airy locating pins will lock in right here. So it's not gonna like shift around and it's like really solid. I just kind of wrench down that thumb screw. And as you can see, there's zero play here. And this JB Weld thing that I did, like it's super dry and it's solid and it's not, not going anywhere. So this whole rig just feels really, really solid now. So I'm pretty stoked. The only thing is that I have these two little micro four thirds lenses, which are great. This is the 15 and I have the 25 mil F17. This 15 is great. I did a whole video on it on my main channel. But the one thing that I really do like about this because I have my S5 2X here, and this is kind of like my, you know, quote unquote cinematic camera. It doesn't feel like I need to try to get insanely shallow depth of field and super cinematic with this camera as well. So I think I might get a, just a basic Panasonic 12 to 35 zoom lens, keep it on here, and then this can just be my little BTS slash event slash run and gun setup. So I got my little Comica mic here that's just connected to a 50 millimeter rod. And then the 50 millimeter rod goes into this handle, which is one of the nice things about this handle. This handle is really solid and it's only like 15 bucks. So I'm gonna go look on Facebook Marketplace, see if there's any 12 to 35s for a good price. And then once I get that lens, I feel like this will be a perfect little C100 or I guess GH100 uh, little cinematic camera. Okay, so coincidentally, I found a 12 to 35 here in Portland on Facebook Marketplace, so I'm gonna go pick it up. All right, just like that, I have a, it's basically a brand new 12 to 35, which is pretty cool. So here it is, the Lumix 12 to 35. Now, I've always loved this lens. I haven't had it for the longest time just because I haven't been shooting on Micro Four Thirds that much. I obviously did have my G85, but I used smaller lenses on that. But the GH5 is big enough that I can warrant having a slightly larger lens on here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just step this up to a uh, 77 millimeter filter and I can put the top handle on. Lock that down. That is literally, there's, there's zero play in that, which I love. And there we go. Got good audio, got a top handle, got a very versatile little lens. This is kind of what I've always been looking for is just this simple of a rig. Something else I like, you'll see it. There's a little cold shoe 
on the back of this handle, which is perfect for, I mean, I wouldn't use it for a transmitter, obviously, but you know, putting mic packs onto it is really nice. So if I'm doing like some kind of setup where I need to put a wireless receiver on there, I can do it that way, which is pretty sweet. So traditionally, Sigma 18 to 35 paired with Metabone Speed Booster is what a lot of people use on the GH5. But my predicament is this is a Super 35 lens and you know, this Speed Booster turns Micro Four Thirds into essentially Super 35. This is the 0.71X version, but it just doesn't seem necessary to me to have this lens anymore. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna sell this as well, the Metabone Speed Booster, because I have an S52X and a Sigma 28 to 70, which is essentially the same focal range as this 18 to 35. I do like this 18 to 35, like optically a little bit better than my 28 to 70, but it's essentially the same thing. And I don't really want to mess with putting a super 35 lens on a full frame camera just to stop it down. Um, I'd rather just use this setup for all like my B cam run and gun stuff. And then this will be kind of my A cam with the Sigma 28 to 70. So yeah, that was the saga of building the perfect GH5 run and gun rig. The GH100 is what I'm calling it. And uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna be shooting on this a lot now. The only last thing that I'll probably add is a mist filter to the front of this lens, just because I like to, you know, soften up the GH5 footage ever so slightly, just to help with more a aliasing. But anyways, thanks for watching. Stuff here on this second channel, uh, and I'll catch you next time. Later.